everyone, this is Susan Brown. Glad to be with you again. This week I'm at an international conference on osteoporosis and nutrition, talking with many experts who've been working on how nutrition can affect bone health. And I'm sitting here with Christian Wright Hi. from Purdue University. Hi. And he has done some very interesting work looking at all the studies on protein. How much protein is beneficial for bone? Is protein really going to help reduce fracture? The studies are yielding kind of conflicting results. And so what you did is do an analysis, a system, systematic a analysis of several studies. Of several reviews. What basically a systematic review is, we try to summarize all the data, all the different studies that are out there into more of a, um, a simple, simplified environment. So I okay. take to assess all the results that's going on and sort of concise them into one general message. And so there's two sort of topics you looked at. One is how protein affects bone mineral density. Bone mineral density, so the mass of bone, the, you know, the hardness of bone. So give us a summary. What did you find? Okay, so out of the studies that I found that were meeting my inclusion criteria, mm -hmm. so I've made sure specific um, studies, only certain studies could fit into this inclusion criteria, um, we found that um, a increasing your protein intake can help prevent the loss of bone mass, so the, the reduction in um, bone mineral density over time in older adults. So actually it can help retain um, that bone density that is um, known to be beneficial for overall health. So if you, you can, they looked at the people who had low protein intake, mm -hmm. they lost more bone than the people that had higher protein correct, intake. Correct, correct. So protein is protective. We want to be careful of that in our diets. Mm -hmm. The second thing you looked at was fracture, actually. Yeah, skeletal fracture. Which is extremely important. So Very what, important. What did you find? So the skeletal the risk of fracture, so actually the occurrence, incidence of fracture. Okay. And overall we found, so out of all the studies we had, we found eight studies that assessed this with dietary protein. We found that most of them had, did not have an effect, uh, like dietary protein didn't have an effect on the risk of skeletal fracture, but that if you actually look at, and that's just dietary protein alone, but if you actually look at other nutrients and coupling with um, dietary protein, we found that calcium intake, if you have a higher calcium intake with higher protein intake, you actually have a reduction, reduced risk of skeletal fracture. So there seems to be an interaction between dietary protein and calcium uh, where um, yeah, you only see an effect if you have a higher calcium intake. Um, with dietary protein. So protein will be helpful, it appears, if you have higher calcium. Higher calcium. And as we were suggesting, and a lot of this meeting is talking about multinutrients, it's probably right. also if you have higher right. magnesium, higher zinc, mm -hmm, higher copper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's a frontier in bone health. We're going to start looking at many nutrients, yes. not just... Totally, totally. And it's not just like people, as scientists, we often, like we talked earlier, get down to the single nutrient and want to talk about, you know, it's just the protein or it's just the vitamin D or it's just the calcium. Realistically, it's all of them together. You know, it's like this it's synergistic effect that works coupling them all together to like a, a wholesome diet. That's really the focus. On. And I think you really have captured a very important thing. And for all of you, so we have to build that strong alkaline diet, multi-nutrients, many nutrients to build bone health. Fun being with you. Take care. Thank you, Christian. No, thank you. Really nice. All right.